Hi, today we will be painting some Chaos Warriors in the, the corn style, god way, whatever you say. Um, theme perhaps is a good way. Uh, they will in many ways be similar to the, the undivided guys I did last time, in the sense that they will not be individual pieces of art, um, but rather something grim and dark enough to support a vibe of grim dark in your army while still being simple and carefree enough to just let you get some time for those units that you actually want to spend your time on like general monsters and all that kind of fun stuff and if something is missing today it's probably just that i didn't mention it because it's already covered in that undivided video um, so just look at that one if something is missing <laughs> and uh, while the colors are today quite similar to, to the ones from the undivided video and um, the method is not really the same and I might have to do a warning here the, the method might not look like a real method it looks more like you know random stuff that happens and, and a big mess but really it's not so much about the step-by-step -step thing today as it is about the principle but I'll talk more about those in the end because otherwise no one will stay around enough to me for me to get to the painting so let's go to the painting Looking at the corn people in the, the army book, their theme is some sort of red with the gold trim and blood stains here and there. This really should not be a problem. We start out exactly the same way as the undivided. All metal is colored in silver. No need to be very neat, but avoid any non metal areas, that's the most important part. Then we move on with gold on the prominent trim and sticky arrow bits. To honor the red and gold theme, try to be a bit more liberal with the gold this time. Then we move on with the, the actual colors. Today, it is all going to be oil colors, and I'll present them up front as they will appear, you know, like all over the place. We have Oxide Red, well for the red hue, Oxide Black because we want to go dark, burnt umber because it's the neutral base of any medieval army, buff because we need to bring things back. We also need some brushes of no particular quality, mine are quite large and crappy. It is fine, you only need a few of them to have a bit of a tip. This might seem like a very limited palette, but together with the base metals it can take us quite far. Today we're going to exploit especially one trait of the oil colors, that they are not permanent. At least not until they have cured, then they're kind of tough. And the first step is to cover almost the entire miniature with oxide red. Just you know, avoid leather and the horns. It will look like crap, <laughs> and that will remain for quite a while actually. We move on with burnt umber on all the leather and wood. I wipe some of the excess red on the fur and then stipple on burnt umber on top of that as well. When all of that is done, it is time to cover all metal in black. And now he sure is ugly. Yeah, this is, this is really ugly. Then we obviously need to wipe some of this stuff off. As usual, I prefer to use a cotton bud for you know, like all the wide areas and the brush where it cannot reach or where more precision is needed. Do the same thing with the burnt umber on the fur and the red oxide on the cloak. Now it looks like this. Still but ugly, but in a different way. Now the entire miniature is covered in some kind of base color and it's time for actual painting. The painting included a multitude of small steps and they were all using the same four colors. Some are so short that they cannot really be described and others are too boring to talk about. Instead, I will give a few examples and then in the end we'll look at what they have in common. The cloak and the shield are the primary bearers of the red color and they didn't really look red enough, so they got a new cover. The plain red shield was looking kind of boring, so it got a few dabs of black and blended in from the bottom and up. 
The same happened with the recesses of the cloak. A bit of black, and then blend up. I stipple buff onto anything that needs to be brighter, like the horns or the fur, before it gets smudged into the existing colors. Then some more was stippled on, but not smudged, and to the edge of the, of the boot and the cape, basically doing a serious skill highlight. When half an hour of semi-random moves were done, some final, you know, red iron oxide was added as bloodstains, just as last time. It might not be, you know, fully visible this time, but I mean, it's still there, it's the gore, it's on a blade, yeah. And then it obviously got based. Um, the same materials and, and techniques as used in the Undivided and the, the old school Chaos Warriors, um, but this time I added a bit of coconut fiber as well, to fill out the rather large 30mm base. And now, it looks like this. There are a number of things I would like to say about Grimdark and efficient painting, but they will have to wait for another video because we'll just stick to the main subject today. And that is the, the sort of whimsical method to the madness painting. And it still turned out a sort of decent result because uh, I had a limited palette and that let me relax and don't think so much about what colors to use and where. Uh, just acting on a gut feeling. If the cloak is too bright, you know, just mix in some black. If the, the horns are too dark, just you know, add a bit of buff. And that's where the oil colors really shine. You just adjust. If it is too, too dull, you know, just mix in some color. If something is too bright, darken it down. If something is too dark, brighten it up. And if something fails miserably, you just, you know, just wipe it off and, and start over. With a few colors you can be really fast. This guy took me like half an hour, including recording and all of that stuff, because I was aiming for something that is good enough to pass in a unit. <laughs> Which means pretty much, as long as you can distinguish the weapon and the head, you're pretty much fine. But it doesn't have to be that way. You do exactly the same thing, you know, like brighten up, darken down, adjust, adjust, adjust. You can do the same thing as long as you want. All colors have a really long drying time, and you can spend all the time you want on this guy and make him a real, you know, grim dark masterpiece. That is your choice. Because the important thing is don't forget to enjoy your hobby 